Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm very excited because I'm going to be making another faith-based video. And today's video is for my Christians out there, my new believers, my baby Christians, people that have just accepted Christ into their hearts. So I'm so excited that you guys are here and that we just get to hang out together. Also, if you're a new believer, if you're not a Christian, thank you for clicking on this video. If you don't know me, my name is Hannah and I make faith and fashion videos and I absolutely love it. So if you guys are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoy this video. Also hit that little notification bell if you guys want to be notified when I post new videos. So with that being said, let's get on into it. Well, that's a good start. My camera just died, so if it looks a little different, I'm sorry. But like I was saying, I'm so glad you guys are here, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. So, as a new believer, sometimes it's confusing because you're like, okay, I believe in God, I have accepted him into my heart, now what? So hopefully I can help you guys figure out where to go from there, especially if you haven't grown up in a Christian family, so you haven't been surrounded with the values and the morals and what you do on a daily basis as a Christian. So I wrote down a few of my own notes just because I had this video idea on this sheet of paper right here and then I kept getting like kind of like signs that I feel like God was like hey I really want you to do this video so hopefully it helps you guys I walked into Christian publishers and I saw this book and I was like hey that's exactly what I want to do my next video on and it's called the new believers Bible basically it's just a NLT version of the New Testament and it gives some really great first steps in the beginning after you've accepted Christ and so I was like oh my gosh this is perfect this was only $6.98 at Christian Publishers if you guys are new believers or if you're old believers and just want to get refreshed on what you believe and why you believe it this is a really really good book I've loved getting into it and basically it's not a book it's the New Testament but in the beginning they just give some first steps and why we believe what we believe so get your notebook get your tea or coffee or whatever you guys like to drink and let's get on into it so after you've accepted Christ obviously the first thing you want to do is study the Bible you want to get to know who Christ is everything in the Bible is God's Word and so if you want to get to know who God is and who you believe in you want to study his word so I love what this book says it says studying the Bible is necessary for our spiritual growth. It's necessary to keep us spiritually strong. It makes scripture a central part of our lives. It helps us apply its truth to our lives. So studying the Bible is super important. Having a quiet time each morning, I would highly recommend. Even if you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have enough time for a quiet time, start with 10 minutes a day and I promise that number will grow. You'll just start to crave reading God's word more and more. And in the beginning, sometimes it's hard. Like I was there with you. What makes it a lot easier though, and another tip that I have is joining a small group. If you have a church already, I would say get plugged in right away with a small group. I think it's so important and it's so encouraging to surround yourself with other believers and other other wise people to help you grow in your faith and as new believers we need people to help us grow and mature in our faith as well and just start taking those baby steps you know learning to walk with Jesus and of course if you don't have a church it's time to start looking for the right church so what I love is this says you should look for a church that has qualities and characteristics of the first century church if you read the book of Acts you will see what the church is supposed to be like and looking for a church with those qualities is super important also, I'm reading the book of Acts right now. It is probably one of my favorite books ever and a really good place to start if you want to learn more about what the church is supposed to look like and what we're supposed to look like as believers. It's so important to join a church right away because we need to be in fellowship with other believers to prepare us, to grow us, to sharpen us. Not only will you grow and benefit from the church, but the church is going to benefit from you being there as well. So quiet time is so important. Getting plugged into a church is very, very important just surrounding yourself with other believers and then prayer time make sure you set aside time to pray to Jesus I do I love doing this in the mornings after my quiet time it is so fulfilling just to wake up and start talking to God prayer was modeled to us by Christ it's so important and if you want me to do a video all about prayer I would love to but definitely start practicing prayer. If you're unsure of how to pray, it's just like talking to a friend. Don't feel like you have to say all these formal, fashionable words. It's
it's just like talking to your best friend or talking to your dad or a family member or someone you're really close to. Don't feel like you have to be like all formal and sophisticated and prayer will get easier with time. The more you do it, the easier it will become, especially in front of other people. But if somebody asks you to pray, don't be afraid to. It's a little intimidating at first. You just have to know sometimes you're going to stumble over your words and it's okay. I still do it to this day and it is okay. I'm practicing. I'm learning. And you know what? Who cares if you do? You're talking to your father in heaven. I love it. So studying the Bible, praying, recognizing that you're a new creation. You are no longer who you used to be. And once you realize what God has done in your life, being a Christian or being a follower of Christ will seem less like a duty and more like something that you want to do because you love him and you love what he's done for you on the cross. One very important thing to realize and open your eyes to is once you've accepted Christ to live in your heart and you now have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, the devil is going to want to go ham on you. Seriously, he hates that you accepted Christ. He hates that you have a relationship with him. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I know a lot of us know that, but it's so good to keep at the forefront of our mind, just to always have our eyes open to that and realize that the devil is real. He wants to tempt you. And it's our job to resist him and to rejoice because we all have victory through Jesus Christ. And we can lean on him during temptation. God will never let a temptation become so strong that we absolutely can't handle it. If we lean on him, we can resist the devil. Just remember that. So another very important thing is to start sharing your faith. I was reading again in Acts about how Saul, who became Paul, immediately after he accepted Christ, he was a new baby believer, okay? He goes and he starts proclaiming God's word. And not that Paul knew everything right away, he was still learning, he was still growing, he's still a baby, but he was excited to share what God has done in his life. And that is simple, that's all we need to do is just share what God has done in our lives. Of course we need to be prepared and know who God is and why we believe in him, but I think that definitely holds a lot of people back thinking, oh my gosh, I need to know all this knowledge, I can't share the gospel until I know everything in the Bible. And that is absolutely not true. And that is actually a lie I think Satan wants you to believe. If you think about it as simply sharing what God has done in your life, how easy is that? Something that I love that my father-in-law says is not sharing Christ is like having the cure to cancer and not telling anyone. When I thought about it in those terms, I'm like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, I have got to get on it. Like, people are dying around me. People are going to hell if I don't tell them about how Jesus saved me and how he wants to save you. So another tip is to seek God's will in absolutely everything you do. Surrender your life to him. Realize that God has a plan for your life. That sounds so cliche, but I promise you it's really true. So another very important thing which God commands in scripture is to give to the church. Give to God. Our money is not our money. The money that God gives us is not ours, it's his. And the number in the Bible that he says is 10% of our earnings. And so if you're called to give more, then that's what God is wanting you to do. And if you have more, give more. But 10% is the general number. God wants to prove his faithfulness through our regular giving and tithing. Look up 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 11. And in Mark 12, 41 through 44, God encourages us to give sacrificially. Another tip is to have courage during trials. We are humans, we are sinners, and there is a real Satan out there, but there is also a real God who has conquered Satan. So we are going to have trials, but we can have courage because we have Jesus on our side. Just one more thing, I know I've mentioned so much, but I think it's so important to start serving immediately. Like, I really need to start doing this, and just because we've been traveling so much, I really haven't served. I mean, I guess I have. I am in a small group and I am like a co-leader, so I do serve, but that is at another church and not in my church. So God gives us each unique gifts of our own, and so we need to use those gifts to bless our church. Um, and I just, I really think that's so important. If you're really good with kids, if you're really good at music, get involved. Or if you just like saying hi to people at the door, um, get involved. Or if you don't like really talking to anyone, do something where like maybe tech or something like that where you really don't have to like say hey or be super outgoing. It's also good to challenge yourself as well and get out of your comfort zone. So just pray about it, 
see where God wants you to serve and get into your community. That's going to be the biggest thing that's going to help you surround yourself with people who will encourage you and just get you excited and on fire for Christ. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'm just so excited that you guys are here today. If you're a new believer, I hope I helped you. And if you've been a believer for a long time, I hope that I've encouraged you and just kind of refreshed your soul. If you've recently accepted Christ, I would love to know. So make sure to leave it in the comments down below. And if you guys have any more questions or advice, leave that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope the sound quality was okay. I'm going to start switching up my camera because I know somebody said that my sound has been a little off recently. Um, so I don't know. It sounds fine when I edit, but then when I put it into YouTube, something happens. So I'm going to try to fix that and I hope this video isn't the same, but leave it in the comments down below if you guys had a hard time hearing me or something like that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.